Welcome to another segment of BuddyCast. I'm here with a double buddies of mine, Dale and Jody Jones. How are you guys doing today? We're, We're good. Doing, We're Thanks groovy. for having us. Thanks for having us, Nick. Awesome. I met these guys when they came to Erie, Pennsylvania back, I think it was New Year's Day or New Year's Eve. You came yeah. to Erie for a show. So, yeah, it was, it was a few years time. ago. And they're an yeah. awesome comedy duo. They, um, they've even done some t-shirt work even in the past. So they created my famous shirt, the Amber Alert shirt. Yes. So I thought they'd be perfect for their buddy cast. Let me ask you guys, how'd you guys meet? I want to hear both sides of the story. Whoops. Are they still there? Are they... Oh, there we are. There we are. Hey. This happens when like, three people are in the middle of a thing and they go, you know what? I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was brand new in comedy and still working a full time job. I was just doing open mics and stuff. And my friends were like, oh, you got to come see this guy, Dale Jones. He's hilarious. And I'm like, eh, I don't really want to go. It's. <laughs> It's Sunday night. I got to work tomorrow. I'm not into it. And they're like, come on, you got to see him. You're never going to see anything like it. So I went and, and I met him. And then I watched his show and I was like, that guy is like special. He, he I don't know how he did what he did for an hour. It was the craziest thing I'd ever seen. Um, and that was it. We became friends for a while, and uh, then yeah. we started dating. We dated I like for... to tell people I got catfished. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! We dated. We so yeah, we dated for two years, off and on. It was like a Ross and Rachel thing, and then um, we moved in together in 2010. Yeah, yeah. married in 2012. Nice. Yeah. So. Nice. Now, who asked you to marry who? Oh, um, oh he asked me, but I pressured him into it. Yeah. I was like, when are we married? Hey, do you like this ring? Hey, can you buy me this ring? Like, oh, I drove the man nuts. Like, it, if I waited for him, we would still just be, like, dating. So, <laughs> was a lot of pushing. I, we bought a house. I don't know if we'd still be dating. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My son and his girlfriend bought a house and they're just still dating because she doesn't have the gumption to push him like I pushed you. Ladies, no. put, uh, don't just send him the her. link for the ring. Just don't, send him the link. Don't do any of that. Just just be nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I, like Gail's, I like Gail's thinking, but honey, if you're listening, you heard Jody right there. So Yeah, this is how you get four husbands. I know what I'm talking about, ladies. So. Yeah, you don't want four husbands. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you don't even want one husband, you know? It's just What is that the goal? Just to collect husbands? <laughs> no, it's to collect diamonds. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Collect them so you can sell them afterwards. Yeah. Wow. I never what you did? Yeah. Oh look at that. I think you paid off the house. That's, I, <laughs> I, I guess I'm gonna have to keep yours hidden that I bought you. <laughs> Next question. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, what inspired both of you to go into comedy? What? Me, I didn't have any other. I didn't go to college. I had no other goals, and I was working, uh, driving a forklift, and I had some buddies dare me to go do stand up. So I went and watched in Nashville. It was 1993, and I watched for, um, I don't know, a month. And then I wrote some stuff and started doing it. Worked my way up from three minutes, and two years later, I was doing. Nice. I was doing but tell them about your first time on stage. Oh, I was horrible. I, I was terrible the first time on stage, and and I, uh, the only laugh I got is I said, "Well, I I said I f that joke up," and the crowd just exploded, and and I that was my first big laugh. I ran off stage and hugged a total stranger and went, "That was great!" And they're <laughs> looking at me like, "You're a moron. You just bombed." And I'm like, "I'll see you next week." I was so happy. <laughs> And, uh, and yeah, I was terrible starting out. I ended up getting kicked off that open mic. They wouldn't let me go on stage. And they said, you can sit in the back and watch all you want, but you're not going up for a while. And I didn't care. I was 
just started going to other clubs and I, I was that was my college. So I just sat in the back of the room every chance I got. And just, yeah. Yeah, but Dale watched comedy as a kid and was really into it. Um, I never did. Like, yeah, anything funny. Yeah. The, we never watched comedy at home. That wasn't something growing up. I never, you know, imagined being a comedian. I had not been to that many comedy shows, but um, I started doing uh, public speaking, and I had all these sappy stories that made people cry. And finally, they were like, "Enough is enough, Jody. You got to learn to make people laugh. This is depressing." So. Uh, yeah. I signed up and I went and took a class at my local comedy club in six weeks. Graduation was five minutes in front of a live crowd and it was awesome. I was 38 years old, but I had that aha moment of, oh my God, this is what I want to be when I grow up. So, yeah. yeah. So she started at 38. I started at 23. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I went. I was on the road full time at 25. And you were on the road full time at thirty eight. You went right away, didn't you? No, um, I was on. I w went full time two years in. I went on mm -hmm. the road and left home and was out there doing it. Yeah. I know you were working a lot. You were already working when I met you. I knew that you were already doing the road. Yeah, I was. Well, I was working around Florida, but I didn't quit quit my job and go full time and for two years. So okay, I didn't know that. See, we're learning. Look at this. You knew yeah. that. <laughs> That. He knew it. He just forgot it. I didn't know. He you, did. He I didn't know listen. you had four husbands. He doesn't either. listen to me, Nick. He, I, he I know you had four husbands. I, I didn't know that you sold those rings. Did you sell? Them? Well, there we go. All right, we're learning a lot here today. <laughs> hey, that's what Buddy's cast is all about: learning. Right. <laughs> just don't, just don't charge me for the lawyer afterwards. You know. <laughs> Yeah, we have your ads running in the bottom of this podcast. <laughs> yep. Uh, so when did you guys first go on tour together? Um, we don't. We didn't a whole lot. I mean, we worked some together, but I was really insistent when I first uh, started comedy. I didn't want anybody to say the only reason I was working is because I was sleeping with Dale Jones. So I worked really hard to get into every club I got into on my own. Um. Mm -hmm. And later, if it was a club that he worked, we were like, oh, hey, could we work together? And they're like, oh, I didn't know you guys were together. So, um, yeah. And then there was uh, a handful of clubs, maybe Erie PA, um, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. There was a handful of clubs that we would go to together. Um, but then I started headlining early on, too. So it didn't make any sense for me to go open for him and make openers money when I could go headline somewhere. And right. Yeah, make and, headline money. So, and I wanted to say, hey, Jody White's funny, not you know Dale Jones's wife is funny too. You know, mm. that's yeah. Not yeah. So there's other than a cruise ship, I don't think there's anywhere left that we will actually work together. And we've had people ask us a lot, but it just doesn't. Yeah, I think the last makes sense. Yeah, and the reason we do a like we'll do a cruise ship together is because we get the same amount of money, and we're both on. They do like uh, we're not on a show together on a cruise ship. So mm -hmm. it's seven thirty, I'm eight thirty, nine thirty, ten thirty. Yeah. Right. So uh, she's we, got her crowd, and I got mine. We will uh, like occasionally, like last time I was working in Sarasota, Dale came to hang out, and partway through my act, he'd come up and interrupt me, and then we'll do a back and forth and play together on stage, and then he'll leave, and I'll finish up my show, or vice versa. If he's yeah. working somewhere, I'll go up, interrupt him, and we'll play with a little back and forth, but otherwise we really don't, we really don't work together anymore. Mm. So you guys yeah. like to tackle each other a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. I, right. So I would go up and do like a guest set in front of her and, uh, and then come up later when she's putting me down. <laughs> I go, Hey, hey what's you weren't what? supposed to tell people you that. You weren't supposed to talk about that. Yeah. And we, yeah, and then we'll do some uh, jokes we've written together. And I mean, eventually that would be very cool. If we could get our YouTube thing to blow up, then we could do the road together. That would be very cool. Yeah, that I mean, that's the ultimate dream for us to be able to go play small theaters together and do the husband and wife show. Yeah, and then she would do her show, and I do mine, and then we do you know twenty and fifteen minutes together or something like that. That'd be, yeah, that'd be awesome. So, yeah, so that's, the, that's one of the goals. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. 
Now, when one of you is on tour and the other one's like, say, at home or, you know, just relaxing, what do you like to do at home? Um, Sometimes we're out at the same time, so. We are. I I have spent a lot of time the last year with the t-shirt business, um, making t-shirts, learning new things about t-shirts, upgrading the equipment. Um, so I spent a lot of time, uh, we built out the basement into a t-shirt shop, so I spent a lot of time down there. But. I also like to sew, which is a really like middle-aged old lady thing to do. I like to make quilts and <laughs> draw That's strange backpacks cool stuff. and uh, I make him pajama pants like I Marvel know. comics. Yeah. Right. Comic I got all these Marvel comics, pants. Marvel comic backpacks. I got a Marvel mask. I, I got all sorts of stuff. Yeah. I like to Pretty work cool. in the yard and I don't know. We're kind of homebodies. I think it's because, you know, when you spend so much time of your life on the road and hotel rooms and everywhere else, when you actually get to be home, you really just want to be home. Yeah. Like I try, I don't want to go anywhere when I get off the road. I just, cause I've been doing it what 27 years now. Yeah. So when I get home, I'm like, wing me, we got to go to a restaurant. <laughs> I, don't go. restaurant. I got to go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to, yeah. I just want to chill out the house. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we, and we got the, well, this is our first home we've had together. We've always had apartments. So there's a million little things to work on around here. So Mm -hmm. we're out doing stuff in the garage or whatever. Dale likes to play video games. I'll play video games. That's true. But I don't play online because little kids insult me and then I get angry. (laughs) (laughs) It's like the one scene in the Avengers. Uh, He's back. Who? Whatever the screen name was. That's a little kid that's tickling hot. Eckling his buddy. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that kid said to me, why are you so bad? <laughs> I was like, I'm five minutes into this. And I don't want to live in my mother's basement. That's why I'm so bad. Because I'm not 12 years old and I haven't turned this into a career yet. Yeah. <laughs> we have a Netflix addiction, too. Yeah, Netflix. We have a Netflix addiction. Uh, we try to, like, during the day, we go our separate ways. I'm working on T-shirts or sewing, and he's playing video games, and we're working projects around the house. But at night, we come together and uh, binge Netflix together. Or Hulu. Yeah. Or Prime. Yeah. Ratio Max. Yeah, we like movies. <laughs> and you wouldn't realize it, but Dale's a big reader, too. I am a reader. Yeah, a big one. I'm so. a reader. I like to read comic biographies. I'm really big on that. You know, somebody's not like your other comics stories. So I'll go through and read all those. And then... Uh, Metal bands. Yeah, and rock and roll bands, stuff like that. And um, The Tao of Pooh, I read that. Uh, Winnie the Pooh, that's a pretty cool book. It's one of my favorites. And it shows all his, his uh, life lessons through Winnie the Pooh. Pretty cool stuff. And then I read how because uh, I'm a comic book nerd. <laughs> so. <laughs> you guys mentioned you do a lot of uh, watching with like Netflix, Hulu, and all that. What are some of your favorite shows to watch together? Uh, we right now are on Hannibal, um, Hannibal and loving it. Um, let me just finish. I'm watching. Uh, I'm watching Westworld, but I'm watching that one by myself. Um, what did we just? Finish? We just finished another one. Of course, I mean, we've done all the standards like Ozark and Orange. Orange, Orange is the New Black. Black. Breaking we Bad. We did uh, Breaking Bad. We did all six seasons in a week. We watched 10 hours a day of Breaking Bad. <laughs> the finale was coming up. We had to get caught up. We never watched it. And at the time, we had a uh, we were living in Kentucky. And we had a roommate. And he would come down from upstairs from his room. And he'd just see us watching TV again. He goes, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt like I needed a physical trainer. We watched so much TV. I get up in the morning, I was sore. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. <laughs> Ten hours a day. We don't have, you know, now that we have the house and we have so many little projects to do, we, yeah, don't, we have don't have time, time for, for that. that. But we were at night. Yeah. We spend every night. We spend a couple hours binging something. So nice. Yeah. 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 What about cool. you? What are you binging these days, Nick? Hmm. I am. Uh, working a job during the day so it's a little tough but um me and my girlfriend we we actually facetime and watch some tv shows together oh, trying to, yeah i'm um, trying to remember what we just finished she'll, she's probably watching right now i'm probably screaming it through the tv screen, or probably screaming it through hers um we just got caught up on a series um i like watching shows like brooklyn 99 or just 
comedy shows, you know? Yeah. Right. Even we've uh, we've watched a little bit of um, a little bit of some uh, old time comedy classics like I Love Lucy, you know. Oh, cute! Yeah. Yeah. Never get old. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. We just finished uh, the Jeffrey Epstein. Ah. Oh, that was good. And yes, yeah. here she is screaming at a uh, screaming at me. What uh, we watched? We watched Single Parents. Oh, I, it just popped up. <laughs> yeah. She's probably screaming that all the way in Massachusetts right now. So. <laughs> Hilarious. I love it. I couldn't it. remember it for a moment, but now it's all coming back to me. And the fun part is getting all the inside jokes from the TV shows, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. all the one-liners that you can tell each other that no one else under, in the room understands. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I always did that with Ghostbusters. Nobody got any clue. Now they're all caught up. <laughs> <laughs> so as a couple, do you guys find it easy to create material together um, yes and no she's uh, a better writer than i am i think you're sweet to say that um i have a really i have an easier time writing for dale uh you know he's a really high energy physical goofy character on stage and i hear that voice very clearly in my head so when he says something during the day um i'm like oh that's a bit and he's like no and i'm like trust me that's a bit um or he'll come to me and he'll be like, oh, I love this line for a punchline. What do I do with it? And and I can pretty clearly hear the Dale voice and I can write a setup for him, uh, which he'll tweak. But, you know, I'm able to throw stuff out. But I find all of my stuff is so real life when he's trying to write for me. I'm like, stop. You're daling it up. That's our word. I'm like, <laughs> you're daling it yeah. up. Yeah, that's uh, our word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what I mean when I say that. Of course, I know what you mean. Yeah, you're dialing it up. <laughs> it's like when my girlfriend says that was a Nick move. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, exactly. Okay, exactly. then you know exactly what I mean. Yeah. Yep, I feel your pain. Yeah, I write backwards. That's my problem. I uh, I come up with a funny punchline, and then I'm like, I don't know how to get to it. I don't know how to get the setup to get to the because I know that punchline will work. I just don't know what the setup is. So then she helps me. I guess you there. Yeah, and I'm trying to do more um, real life stuff. It's harder for me. I'm better with the imagination and just going crazy, you know. Um, but I'm trying to take more real life stuff. Like I talked about adopting my sons. So that's I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I was proud I actually wrote that. That was cool. Yeah. So I'm getting I'm getting there. It's going to take me another twenty. Years. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. okay. Goofy, and then I'll do something that's real life, and people like that's not true. I'm like, come on. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you guys have any like favorite jokes or routines about each other? Like, like about do you have other. do you have like a favorite joke from Jody or Jody to Dale? He does a snoring bit about me that I think is hilarious and it's very accurate. So, um, but I have. This is bad stuff. She's snoring. <laughs> I have a pretty dark sense of humor, so any joke that he does that's really dark or effed up, it's my favorite. And I'm like, oh, that's yeah. really more my style. You should give that to me. It doesn't fit within your character. Um, <laughs> that's right. I wrote a joke. I guess we could say that on here. I wrote a joke about it. Uh, oh, I wasn't telling you so you could tell them. I was just being... Oh, you're being hateful because you won't give me that joke. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> I love all her jokes. You're so full of it. <laughs> I do. No, she's a great writer. She's awesome. I, I, I barrel laugh in the back watching you. He does. That's the beautiful thing. Uh, if Dale is ever at a show, um, he, he has a very distinctive laugh. So even when we're on a cruise ship and it's 450 people, you can pick out his laugh in the back of the room. It's really nuts. And, and he's very easy to laugh. I'm not. Like something has to be really shocking or disturbing or, you know, really catch me off guard for me to laugh. But Dale, oh. I he, worked hard at that, though. He loves to laugh. I mean. It, there were so many comics that just get all this, this chip on their thing and they, you know, go, well, that, that was funny. I didn't get into this for that. I got into this to have a good time. And that's so I try to keep that childlike thing, you know. I mean, I'm still very serious about my job, but with the, the guy in front of me or the female comic or what, anybody that's in front of me, I try to watch the whole show and, and uh, just enjoy it. 
as as uh, like it's a show for me, you know. Yeah. And then I try to get things out of their act and I, that I can incorporate into mine because I think that's fun and you'll never be able to do that again, probably. You know, I just try to keep it fun, keep the childlike part of it. Not incorporate into your act, call back to call back to act. it. Call back to you it. You don't want yeah. to make it sound like yeah. you're no, taking not, people's material. No, I would never do that. No, I would, he calls I, back to I'll call back to somebody's, somebody's joke during my act and then the, and that draws the crowd in more. And they're like, oh, he was he was listening too. You know, he's part of the audience, you know, and it makes it more just a, a group thing. Thanks, it special. Yeah. So that's why I like it. Yeah, we got off. What off was the question? There. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. Speaking, of callbacks, yeah. speaking of callbacks, I'm going to call back something that you said earlier. You mentioned how you just got back from a show that um, had a bunch of like COVID, um, which the word I'm looking for, like, all the setup and everything, like the social distancing and the limited amount of people. How do you think comedy clubs are going to be impacted by this whole pandemic and your guys' opinion? There's one that just closed again. There was one that just, yeah. Oh. It's, it's not good. It's you know, not good. Mm -hmm. but I, I don't know what's going to happen. There's some that are going great guns and they just decided to keep going and there's others that are, you know, it depends on the owners. You know, some of the owners are or uh, like, I, I don't want to do this. And then there's some owners that are being forced to shut down. And um, I've, I've I, heard, I don't know. I've heard some comics say that they don't think comedy will ever come back, but I disagree. I think comedy will come back. Um, I think that, you know, they'll either come up with a cure or the heat will kill it off or whatever. I don't know what, I don't know what it is, but I don't mm -hmm. think COVID-19 is going to be here forever. Um <laughs> Um, and I think that comedy will come back with a bang because I think people will be so entertainment starved um, and have been through so much stuff that they really need to laugh. Um, so I think comedy clubs will come back. The ones that can survive, the ones that can hold on, I think it'll come back and I think it'll come back in a big way. That'll be the hard part. This is a, this is like a, when we had the, um, what, 2008 when the. Oh, the market crashed and yeah. nobody had any money. Yeah. So then it, it, it bled out the comics that couldn't afford to stay comedians, you know, and it bled out some of the clubs that couldn't afford to stay, you know, and this is the same thing again. It all goes through ebbs and flows. And um, even if they don't get rid of COVID, I think they'll get some sort of control of it, you know, where people you just go get your COVID shot every year or whatever. I don't know. I don't know how this, I told you. I just know. <laughs> <laughs> I think the world will eventually be back to normal, and I think that comedy will come back a boom. Yeah, whatever um, normal is. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to have a job again. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah, because initially <laughs> we were at uh, Carnival Cruise Lines. I I work uh, a lot of ships, and we heard that Carnival Cruise Lines was going to start back up in August with eight of their ships, and then uh, we just got notification that. Uh, all of the cruise lines are voluntarily pushing their start dates back to September 15th. Yeah. Um, and we don't know if it's going to be pushed back even further now. So that's really, really stressful for us thinking, mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That we could be out of work another three months or I can be out of work another three months. I don't know. Yeah. I got a lot of clubs. Like I got, I got three weeks in July, but I don't know with all the stuff surging, if they're going to, I'm going to lose that again. You know, <laughs> everybody got excited because more memorial day and then between that and then the protest now everybody's like oh no all the numbers are shooting up so i, I don't know what's gonna happen mm -hmm. um, a lot yeah. of uncertainty for sure for sure so let's move on let's move on to a lighter situation okay um, we'll black it. here we go everybody everybody look right there <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, no. okay that was a good one that was a good one so in these segments, I always like to ask for people's advice. I'm going to ask you two pieces of advice. Number one, for all the new couples out there, or just all the couples in general, what's your advice? Like, what do you guys have to offer as, like, you've been through? Like, what's, what's your ultimate, like, advice? Just, like, finding the funny moments during this pandemic or I think the very just, like, the very best thing any couple can have is communication. Um, Dale and I are really good at communicating. Uh, we have this little thing we do where it's, 
I've created a story that we always start it with that because it, we know it's my opinion and not necessarily the truth. I've created a story that you don't care about me because you didn't hear what I said to you. Um, instead of me sitting and, and like grinding and, and being upset about that, I can't tell you how many friends I've had that are like, oh, I, I'm so upset about this. And I'm like, well, what did your husband say? And they're like, oh, I didn't tell him. And I'm always like, well, why wouldn't you? This is you're supposed to be your best friend, the person you want to spend your life with. And you, you're afraid to tell them or you're afraid to talk to them. If you can't tell the person you're with everything, um, something's wrong. So I think communication is the best tool any couple, young or old, can have. And, and you got to be not afraid to talk to each other and tell each other the truth about everything, even when it's ugly, even when it hurts. I don't like your beard. <laughs> That's a lot I think, it's a, I think it's important to have a basement. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's it's uh, you actually gotta like the person that you're with. I've I've been I've dated so many women that I was like in my head I was like, well, I. Uh, I can't find anybody else, so I'll just stay here on this one. And don't ever do that. <laughs> don't don't just write it out. And and also the mistakes I made was uh don't be afraid to be the bad guy. If you're not, I would stay with a girl forever until she broke up with me because I didn't want to be the bad guy. And that's ridiculous. So and, and so uh I guess honesty is a, is a big thing. Yeah. And, and and it was cool that we were also I mean, I actually like hanging out with her. I mean that's you know, some guys are with their girl and they're like, well, she's hot, but we got nothing in common. But we actually do like the like same shows. Yeah. Not everything, though, but we also realize that's another important thing. We realize what we don't like and we don't force it on each other. Like she wants to watch some, I don't know, what you call them, rom-com or something. And then we'll go through this whole list of movies and then she'll go, baby, uh, good night. And then she'll just <laughs> watch whatever she wants to watch and I can go do what I want to do. If we can't agree on something, and that's okay. We don't have yeah. to agree on every day. It's though. important to have your own interests and realize that that's okay to go do your own things and then come together and do the things that you like and talk about it, communicate. Yeah. yeah. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. So my final question for you guys, for $1 million is, <laughs> I don't have a million dollars on me unless you unless you accept student loans. But yeah. We'll take a check. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you one of those IOUs that looks like it was written by a kindergartner, you know? Yeah. Nice. Perfect. Nice. I like this. So for anyone that's looking to go into comedy today, anyone that's thinking about it, you know, or just starting out, fresh to the game, what's your ultimate advice? Don't do it. <laughs> I don't say that. <laughs> um Comedy is a really hard life, but I truly believe everybody should try it once. Like, there's such a rush on stage. You know, it's the fix that once you get up there and you get that, you want to get it over and over and over and over again. I think everybody should try comedy one time. Uh, it's a hard life. You're going to miss a lot of holidays. You're going to miss a lot of birthdays. You're going to miss a lot of family time, uh, being on the road, gig to gig to gig. Um, it can be lonely. It can be depressing but you do it over and over again for that high on stage which is like nothing can that can compare to it when you've made a, a room full of people laugh and to bring joy um just write 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 and get up on stage and try it because unfortunately with jokes there's you can run it by as many people as you want but until you get on stage in front of a crowd you're never going to know if it works so you need to record your stuff so i take my yeah. phone and I put it on the stage with me. When you're first starting out, you should video more. That way you know that, you know what you look like. You know, So if you're doing something annoying like this, you can be like, oh, I didn't even know I was doing that because it's some kind of tick. Um, my whole act is ticks. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, but, but that's a good point because I apparently I used to hold my one hand like this. Like I'd be holding the mic and my other hand was just like here. 
And so my friend made me record myself and he would go through it with me. He's like, what the hell are you doing? That's so annoying. Stop that. And I didn't even realize I was doing it. So yeah, yeah videotape yourself. And, and I audio tape. I just take my, not for anybody else, just for me. I'll take my phone on stage and just use the voice memo on my iPhone. And then, um, and I don't listen to the whole thing every night, but if I ad lib something or if I say a joke the right way, finally, I have it. You know, and I don't have to think about, you know, I've gone before I started recording, I would go through a year going, how did I do that joke? How did I do that joke? And I just couldn't get back. But then you got it. You can focus and just go on with your stuff, you know, um, you know, write everything down. Record stuff. Get and, on stage as much as possible. Yeah. And don't uh, so many young comics starting. Uh, they play to the back of the room. They want to make the other comics laugh. And that's never, I mean, it's fun to do now and then. And he and I will go, especially when we lived in Louisville, we'd go to an open mic and we'd do jokes just for the comics in the back of the room, which is great to have fun sometimes. But that's not, you're never going to get paid with those jokes. Um, yeah. That's our biggest advice to so many young comics. You're never going to get paid with those jokes. You've got to figure out how to make the rest of the people in the room laugh. Those are the people who buy the tickets, who will get you work. Um, and a lot of young comics miss that point a lot of times. They're like, but I'm killing and you know, the guys in the back. Yeah, but those are comics with effed up senses of humor that those aren't jokes. Yeah, they're not buying hurt. tickets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so, yeah, you just got to listen to your crowd. Your crowd will tell you what's right, what's wrong. They, they Because they're, they're, they're not laughing on purpose. You're making them as a response. So if you listen to that response, you'll figure out, Oh, I'm not getting a big enough laugh here, so I need to work on this, or, or you know, or this joke's done, or this joke needs work. Yeah, you, you just, just a lot of listening, you know. Absolutely. And uh, I don't know. I don't know of any other advice. Oh, if you're gonna sleep in a rest area, give the guy that's a guard a twenty dollars and ask him to watch your car. I used to do that. <laughs> I just got a Snuggie and would cover my head completely so they couldn't tell whether it was a man or woman sleeping in the car. Especially if you're a female comic going on the road. Be super careful. My gosh. It's a totally different world between women and men yeah. comics. It, it's. Uh, I took a nap in a rest area one time. I was driving from one city to the next. And it was daytime. It wasn't even night. And uh, I woke up. And like I sat up in my seat and I look and there's a guy standing in the spot next to my car, like eating a banana, like watching me sleep. It scared the heck out of me. I like I needed to pee so bad. I'm like, nope, I'll find someplace else. I just hauled butt out of there. Yeah, it's it's a scary world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would that would scare me. That's just anyone just. <laughs> that would have scared me, too. I, I think. But then I made it, I don't know, depending on what the guy looked like. I may have said, hey, you, you got another one? You got another banana? <laughs> <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> you and me would be like, excuse me, do you know how to get to so-and-so so -so place? Right. Like, have you guys seen the movie uh, National Lampoon's Vacation? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. When, the scene when they pull, I think it was like somewhere near Detroit or like some... <laughs> Area like that. he pulls out to the side of the road for directions. They basically tell him like I can't remember exactly what they told him or something like that. And he just goes, "Thank you very much." Yeah. They basically tell him like "f off" or something, and he's like, "Thank you very much." What was so funny is they did two different versions of that. They had the television version and the movie version. So the movie version was "f off," and the TV version, which I thought was a funnier line. He uh. He said, hey, you know how to get back to the freeway? And this pimp's walking out with his prostitutes. And he goes, what do I look like? Christopher Colombo? <laughs> Thank you very much. And he rolls the window up. I thought that was 10 times funnier than the line in the movie. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> All righty. Well, that was Dale and Jody Jones. Thank you guys for joining us. You know, I can't wait for you guys to come back to Erie one day. We'll definitely have to hang out. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they have new owners now. Yeah, they did. They, uh, they transitioned this year. And those cool. people are nice people, too. So, Awesome. That's good to know. All yeah. right. I'll hit you up. Sweet. Yeah, they're friendly. they're friendly people. But, um, yeah. Hey, stick around after the show for a little bit. I want you to meet someone. Yeah. But, awesome. Yeah. But for those of you watching, this has been another segment of BuddyCast. Thank you to my friends, Dale and Jody. You guys were awesome, as always. 
and I hope I hope things go well with you. You know, I have to talk to you about another T-shirt idea that I have. But um, what's the really quick for our viewers out there? What's the name of your T-shirt business in case someone's looking for a new T-shirt or something like that? Uh, ComedyCoupleTees.com. We've got a bunch of funny T-shirts on there, but uh, like Nick, we also do custom T-shirts. So whatever you want on a T-shirt, we can put it on there. I'll go see if you had a card to hold. Yeah, and it's tees. Yeah. That's it, right oh, there. Boom, yeah. look at you with the oh. stuff. Oh, Try it. You got it. Yeah, couple tees.com. They made me a shirt. I think it's in the wash right now, but um, you guys made me my iconic uh, shirt. That says um, "I can go see champion" on the front, and then uh, back to and then on the back it says like "back to back Amber Alerts." Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. If I go on tour, I'll have to talk to you guys about getting some shirts for, you know, like after the show and everything that could say something like "I can go see runner up" or something like that. You know? Right. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be very cool. Yeah, that's, that's cool. another big thing for comics going on the road. That's the only way. I was able to make it from gig to gig by selling merch, selling t-shirts after shows. So yeah, that's that's thinking, nice. it's a good idea to think, think yeah. about. Yeah. I would, I did that too. I sold shirts as soon as I could. Absolutely. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. I hope you guys had a blast and I will talk, I'll talk to you guys soon. Cool. Like I said, thank you. Hey.